Welcome back to the Ministry Talk podcast, where we talk about all aspects of ministry, uh, both good and bad. Uh, we are continuing our series about discipleship, uh, helping those that are starting their journey with Jesus Christ. Uh, this week, we're going to be talking about discipleship along the way, or as Pastor Ryan put it, relational discipleship. Uh, Pastor Al, uh, could you, uh, as we begin this, uh, just with some establishing thoughts on how this fits into the mission at First Baptist Church. I do establish specifically discipleship along the way. Yep. Explain okay. that. Actually, we explain that statement. So I noticed how uh, Pastor Ryan coined the phrase. You repeated the phrase and said, hey, we'll just pitch that right to the left and, yeah. have, uh, yeah. and have me. Well, I knew Pastor Ryan would help us understand. No, no doubt about it. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right. Maybe we should talk first of all why we're doing this podcast outside. It's all about discipleship, right? Uh, because we had some wonderful discipleship yesterday and, and and heard some things that we couldn't go inside for discipleship today. No. So along the way, I believe the intent uh, of that phrase, not being inside of Pastor Ryan's mind, uh, is that how do you help disciple people and not just have like quote a discipleship class? Very helpful, very profitable. But is discipleship quote along the way end quote? Uh, even more profitable? Is it more in line with how Jesus operated, where he didn't just say, okay, you know, boys, uh, Andrew, Peter, James, John, sit down now, it's discipleship class time. Or was he just literally discipling as he uh, went about serving, ministering, walking town to town, asking, provoking questions like, hey, what'd you guys ask about? What are you talking about? Things like that, taking time to teach and time to, uh, to really disciple the disciples. So I think that's what we're talking about today is what does it look like in... Uh, this century and this modern culture to disciple along the way outside of some parameters that are helpful using very specific times uh, and classes and curriculum, but more so how do you influence a life by a life? Okay. So that, well, with that, now that we have an explanation of what that means, uh, I think- uh, was, was Pastor Ryan taking notes? He needs to write yeah, that yeah, down. Yeah. <laughs> write that down, please. <laughs> um, yeah, to be an encouragement to maybe a pastor out there who's listening or even- uh, people that discipleship in their own churches, uh, would you guys be willing to give some examples of you uh, maybe disciple, discipling along the way or using some of that relational discipleship? I spent a large amount of time either going to lunch or at Starbucks with lots of different people. Um, I find that most people I'm trying to help grow, I point them to the right passages and the right things, right discipleship material, have them work on it. And then we just meet places and talk about life, talk about growth, and it seems to work much better just spending time with them. If I have to run an errand, um, I often call somebody and say, hey, ride along with me to Home Depot or Sam's Club or wherever we need to go. I once, P Pastor Willette was talking to me and said, hey, you're doing a really good job and I, with the recovery program. And I said, I really don't do much. And he said, and he had watched where I had gone the last week. And he said, well, Monday you were at coffee with this guy. And Tuesday you took coffee to this guy at work and spent some time with him. Wednesday, you went to lunch with this guy. And I had not realized that I had been doing discipleship. I was just connecting with these people. But I find that that's what works. Yeah, I, I, absolutely. And uh, I guess uh, this was a phrase I coined, apparently, along the way. Uh, and really, I look at how I've been, most of the discipleship that has happened in my life from other people um, has been this type of discipleship. I think of even today... Um, as we were tearing down from an event at Pastor Howell's house yesterday, the conversation between me and Pastor Scott driving in the truck and having a conversation and the sharpening that goes on and the growth that happens through conversations just while we're doing other things. I think of times that I've been able to uh, with teenagers or uh, with other people in the church while midst doing other things, whether it be um, whether it be doing something fun or getting some work done or running errands being able to have some discipleship. And many times we may not think of it as discipleship. Um, we just think of it as being a Christian and walking walking with God. And when, when that happens, he's going to be a central part of our life. But it is important that we allow a window into that from other people. I think growing up on the mission field, I was able to see that a lot with my parents and uh, with, with me, but also with, with people in the church allowing them to allowing them to be around and uh, making sure that they were a part of the understanding the process of thinking and making decisions and uh, eating lunch together, like you said, having them stay over for dinner, even holidays, having some people around to see, hey, 
this is what a Christian life looks like. And discipling by example, I think, was one of the greatest ways uh, we can disciple. Um, one of the greatest ways you can parent, right? You don't just tell your kids or tell people to walk with God. Walk with God and allow them to see that in your life. Uh, Mr. Koblitz, first time on the podcast. Welcome. Good to be here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you get the notes? or? Yeah, just a moment ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, no- the notes, it's not... Not much there. The new guy <laughs> never gets the notes the first time. <laughs> what about hazing tactics? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you nervous? Uh, a little bit, you know, yeah. naturally. Uh, well, with that, same as Pastor Scott's Pastor Ryan, any examples there of uh, that sort of discipleship? Um, well, first I want to say I'm just a little offended that Pastor Scott has never invited me to go out <laughs> for coffee or a Home Depot run. So I, I just want to sit at his feet and learn, but he hasn't given me the opportunity. <laughs> so maybe someday. It's because you're such a great Christian already. <laughs> I wish they were true. Cool. No, uh, i tried, but you're too busy mowing and stuff. You know, just... Yeah, it is hard to disciple while on a mower. <laughs> I, I guess I could try that, but I don't know that would go very well. No, I, I think along the way kind of captures that. Um, I don't think I'm particularly good at this, but there's a young man uh, that's ridden the bus for the past couple of years, and we'll bring him to church on Sunday nights some, somewhat regularly. And I mean, a lot of the time, it's not even like intentional conversation necessarily. Like sometimes it is, but it's just like chatting and he's seeing my family and I'm um, seeing how we interact. And it's really just a few minutes, but then we sit together in church. Um, and some of the best examples in my life have not been necessarily in formal settings, but uh, like you mentioned with Pastor Scott this morning, or you know, doing a task around the church, or you know, some type of of work, and you're just spending time together. I think um, as a teacher, the way the times where uh, relationships were built the most were in those non-official times, you know, where you're just spending time together, joking around. They can see that you're a real person, um, and see that. This is actually fun to be a Christian and to love the Lord. So I think it's important also to establish that this type of discipleship and and mentoring is not brand new, nor is it just created because we needed some content to fill for podcasts. I think the foundation for it is found in Deuteronomy when parents are encouraged to influence their children and to remind them of who God is and what uh, what what his character is like. And it tells, instructs the parents that when you're, rising up, when you're getting up, when you're laying down, when you're walking, when you're doing this or that, then instruct them in the way, right? That's the concept. And just like, as the Bible says, Christians are new creatures or they're, they're newborn babes, in a sense, we're carrying them along the same way, just like Jesus did. And that's another example where Jesus just walked and talked with his disciples, always teaching a lesson, never uh, mismanaged the time, never wasted it, and took some time with his disciples to clarify, to instruct, to give them insight. I mean, he told them things, the Bible tells us that he told them things he didn't tell anybody else. He said, "This you get to know the inside scoop on this. And, uh, and, and we have to remember this, almost all of his teaching and instructing during that time till he died was lost on them. It seems like they didn't remember a blooming thing. Don't deny, they denied. I'm going to rise from the dead. They don't remember that. It's like, what did you remember? <laughs> so I think it's important for us, right, to remember and to, to, that if people won't remember what Jesus said, who never wasted a single word, who explained everything exactly perfectly for, for those people to hear and to, to grasp, and they missed it, well then, at, on our best days, we shouldn't have higher expectations than Jesus did. Yeah, I think it's interesting what you were saying about parents my daughter one day i started teaching a little bit and she looked at me and said dad if you're going to get this deep we should be heading to starbucks but what was neat was she was giving me permission to go ahead and do it as long as i started driving to starbucks and so uh, it had become a pattern that we had done i'm just gonna toss this in so we've talked about like doing coffee i do the same thing right Mm -hmm. and it is almost shocking when you meet someone and like hey let's go grab coffee they're like i don't drink coffee and you're like, uh, well, I mean, how do we even spend time together? I mean, so, yeah. well, what's the scenario? Like, around coffee. like, we're not going to go to a tea shop. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, so, I, to continue the conversation, uh, I think we uh, have established that it's just bringing people along the journey, whether it's coffee or 
just conversation or maybe over a game and just having these conversations. Uh, I guess the question would be then how do you balance the conversation in working with teenagers, uh, right, for Mr. Koblitz and Pastor Ryan and working with adults, uh, even for Pastor Al, myself, Pastor Scott, and all of us, how do you balance the conversation? How do you keep it not maybe discipleship focused, but just where the conversation can be one of growth and moving forward? Yeah, I think that, uh, I mean, it's an important question because I know my tendency, at least an important question for me to ask myself, because my tendency would be to build relationships, but to what end, right? Uh, like, just like, hey, we're having fun together. We're talking, we're having a good time. But then uh, I need to make sure I know for me, just the way my personality is, that there is an end, there is a purpose to it, um, that we are just doing these things for, uh, for, for fun and for no reason. Uh, but I think pro- probably it's going to happen naturally if we are personally keeping a focus on Jesus Christ. At least I know for me, the, the times where my focus is more on, more on God and more on Jesus Christ and more on my relationship with him, it comes out more naturally. Um, whereas if, if I'm going through a time when maybe I'm not, my focus is somewhere else and I'm distracted, well, then that's, that's going to be evident in the way that that, in the way that that conversation goes. I think it's very similar to, um, in a previous series we did about outreach, we talked about relational discipleship. And I think something that Pastor Howell talked about was, um, building, we're building bridges in those relationships but we're not just building a bridge to nowhere. We're building a bridge for a purpose to get somewhere. And uh, we need to remember that, yes, there is a there is a purpose at the end of, end of this, and that is to help someone grow. And I think uh, we need to just come in with that, that mindset and that principle in our mind. I was talking to Pastor Scott earlier about it, about the fact that, like, it doesn't mean you have to come in with, like, a list of five points that you need to talk about in this conversation. And uh, in fact, that could get in the way sometimes of being a good listener and and really trying to be flexible to what the Holy Spirit wants. But coming in with a mindset of the principle of I'm going to keep Christ at the center of everything I do. And this would apply to parenting as well as as discipling others, um, others in the church. It's just keep Christ at the center of, of, of all of it. Doesn't mean you can't have fun. You know, I love playing board games and card games, but I need to remind myself, don't just get distracted with that and think that like, this relationship is is only for for fun and for playing games, but in the midst of that, try to find a way to point people back to Christ. I'm working with teens. Uh, working with teens. Well, this is where the nervous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're all um, turned and stare. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just caught off guard there. Apologize. <laughs> no, um. So one thing that I struggle with sometimes when spending time with teens is only talking about things that they're interested in or that I'm interested in and knowing how and when to turn that conversation the right way. But one thing I was thinking about when uh, you were talking, Pastor Ryan, is obviously not all of your followers continue to follow necessarily after your sphere of influence is over uh, in the official sense. And I thought of a young man that used to come to church um, several years ago, and I ran into him a couple times out in the community, and I didn't attack him, um, but I let him know like that he was cared for, you know, that we're still here for him, and just keeping that line of communication open. So if he ever does want to come back, like we're still here, we're, we're still available, and and I think the Lord operates in the same way, like His mercies are new every morning. They're, 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 his faithfulness is great. Like, and when investing in people, don't give up if it doesn't seem to be panning out, but um, keep it open, you know, because you never know when they're going to come around. I, I agree with these guys. Uh, Pastor Ryan who talked about don't come in with a list of five things, and that that is exactly right. Don't have an agenda just to operate by your principles. And part of it is, is, they've got to know how much you care. And the way we do that is by listening. And so I often start when we go out for coffee, what's going on? And sometimes they want to tell me about their kids and tell me about everything else and that. And then I'll ask another question, how, how are you doing? What can I pray for for you? Um, and just start asking them those type of questions. And so our job is to operate by principle that we want to get the truth, but sometimes they want to talk about the lines for five minutes. That's okay. 
But if we allow ourselves for the whole time just to be a sports conversation, then we're in trouble. Uh, so I, I guess maybe uh, to sort of continue this aspect of the conversation, um, like what do you personally do to make sure that that happens, right? So if somebody does start talking, you know, about the Lions and how the game went last night, um, how do you bring it back, right? So like Pastor Scott said, do you ask a question or, you know, do you just change the conversation completely? But what do you do specifically? Well, I will say one just comment on that is that isn't it funny how it seems so easy to change the conversation towards something that like let's say we're talking about um we're 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 talking about what Cody does for work and we're having a conversation, but then all of a sudden I want to talk about the Lions game. It's easy to make those churns in the conversation, but what sometimes it seems like when the churn is towards spiritual things, it's almost like there's a barrier in our mind. And uh I mean conversations churn all the time. You, If you sit and talk to someone for 30 minutes, you're not talking about one thing the entire time. Your conversation is going to naturally churn towards different topics. And in that, in those moments, right, don't, they start talking about the lions. I, my opinion is that you shouldn't like just stop and be like, hey, I'm not here to talk about that. Like, let's, no, let them talk. Have I, I personally, I don't really follow sports all that much. So I'll do my best to listen and be like, oh, that's interesting. Maybe ask a question that they will think sounds stupid because I don't know what I'm talking about. But then let them talk about it and then try to turn the conversation towards spiritual things um, when that part of the conversation kind of like comes to a natural, natural end. And maybe I'm maybe I'm off on that, but I was saying like conversations turn to and fro uh, constantly and we just need to be willing to turn them towards spiritual things. And personally, I'm not claiming that I'm I'm the best at that. I, I struggle with that many times and. In my mind, at least, sometimes there almost seems like it's a barrier. Like it's more awkward to do that for some reason than to turn the conversation towards uh, towards the TV show or towards a sport game or or uh, like oh, like you guys did great in the soccer game the other day. That's easy to turn the conversation that way. But sometimes towards spiritual things, it seems like it's slightly more awkward for some reason. I think Jesus said, "Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks," and so. What we love, what we are familiar with will naturally be turned in the conversation. If we love sports, we will naturally turn it that way. I enjoy soccer. I can talk about soccer all day long. I love the Lord. I believe I can talk about him all day long. And I, and I love studying. So as I'm working with people, there are times that you let those other parts of the conversation go. I'll tell you, there's sometimes I'm having those parts of the conversation and I'm itching on the inside to get this thing turned. <laughs> Because I realized that talking about soccer, talking about football, doesn't matter a lick, you know, and we are just wasting time for what's most needful and more needful in people's lives. And so I love the words, the being principled, being purposed, um, or staying on purpose in that. I think it's extremely effective, extremely helpful um, inside of that particular avenue. And, and I would say for any pastor out there that I guess what we're trying to say today is you don't have to get out there and have a plan to go to coffee with 35 different individuals the first afternoon. All right, if you take one guy for coffee and another guy, you got to run a Sam's Club, you take him with you, um, then you are starting to implement some of these discipleship in the way, or according to Pastor Ryan, along the way. Uh, and that's really important. The thing about the young man that, that Brother Koblenz works with, and if you think about it, he probably, apart from from your family, doesn't see a husband and wife who both love Jesus Christ operating as as a husband and wife. He doesn't see children where the whole family, your whole family loves God. And so just by the nature of him being with your family, he is seeing evidences of Jesus Christ that you don't even realize, that you couldn't even think about saying. Um, and Lord willing, as he grows in the Lord, as he, as he studies the Bible and walks with God, he'll be the right kind of husband, but no doubt your influence and just watching you interact with your family will have a large impact on his life. I try to keep three to five families in the hopper uh, that I'm trying to actively disciple. It would be hard, like you said, for 35 families. Hopper, is that is that like a, I don't know, like a, the hopper? <laughs> I, I, the hopper? I was thinking like one of those, uh, 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 what, what I can't think of they are now. They're using one out back here where they're like, destroying their shredding bushes. <laughs> it's got a big hopper on it. Well, whatever you want to call it. I try to keep three to five that I'm actually... That's trying. what I was looking for, wood chipper. That's got a wood big hopper on it, too. 
I got five families in the wood chipper hopper. Yeah, ready to go in there. <laughs> uh, well, I yeah, the discipleship with Pastor Scott is that the wood chipper? Yeah, I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what that does, I I, I purposely. I'm trying to touch those once a week at least. And that is real helpful because I can look at and see where they're at. And sometimes they decide they don't want to spend that time and don't want to do it. I just then put somebody else in the hopper so that we can help them. You know, I one thing I found chasing people that don't want help is just a waste of my time. And so I have to look at people who are hungering and thirsting after righteousness and want to grow. And generally, they'll allow you to steer the conversations when they're that way. So that reminds me of something that Pastor Let challenged us years ago, and I really love uh, the concept. You have people in the hopper or who you believe that God would want you to help or impact and to pray for them every day. Yeah. It keeps them on your heart and mind. And then you start to, because you're praying for them, you start to think about them, think about where they're at and the influence. Then those conversations are natural. Then the time is natural. Then when you see the text or the phone call, it's, you know, when you think, I've got to run an errand, who can I call? Well, you've been praying for these people already. Most likely, it's who your mind will go to first. Damn it. Yeah. Yeah, I think the encouragement uh, from all the guys here uh, talking about this concept of discipleship is just uh, having a willingness to allow people into your lives uh, in, in different aspects, different times, different situations, uh, but allowing people to come see your relationship with God, have conversations about your relationship with God, how they're doing, all these different things. And I think for anybody listening, it's that aspect of our Christian life is to be that salt and light in the world uh, for people to see Jesus Christ in our lives and be a testimony and then see the discipleship that comes from that testimony in our lives. Uh, Pastor Al, if you're willing to share uh, maybe some short thoughts of encouragement for God's words before we close this episode out. You know, it's interesting how the Lord always seems to bring to mind what, what I think would be fit in and helpful, but it was either Friday or Saturday night I was reading uh, in my devotions, and where Jesus Christ uh, stands and basically overlooks Jerusalem. And he says, Jerusalem, how often I, I, I wanted, I desired, I would have gathered, you know, and the idea is as a mother hen to her, to her chicks, protection for safety, for help and relief. And he said, but you wouldn't. And inside of this conversation, there will be many who you desire to help who we wish, boy, if, if they would maybe just listen to something, not that we're smart, but that, that God is so wise, they would just take some of that biblical knowledge that maybe the Lord would use us to help in part. Boy, their, their life would change, their relationship with their wife or their husband would, would be altered and their children would be changed and their walk with God. And sometimes the frustration comes because it is so perhaps plain to us, though not there were anybody, and there's a block there. But if people would resist Jesus Christ, and if people would not listen to him in spite of the miracles and the teachings and the displays of power, then we cannot be discouraged when our way seems to be hindered, when people are neglecting what we are presenting. And even though we're trying to get it from the word of God, we will be uh, limited at best. And so to remember to say, encourage the Lord that we don't have to be worried while doing it. We can do our job. We can love and pray and invest and do our best disciple. And then God can take that. And the other part is up to the person to respond to it. If someone doesn't want to be helped, like I just said, then we can't help them. We can love them and pray for them and do all we can for them. Uh, thank you so much uh, for joining us for this episode of the Ministry Talk podcast. Uh, as always, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Uh, we'd love to answer those for you, be an encouragement and blessing to you. Uh, thanks once again for joining us and God bless. <laughs>